Back. Thanks for staying with us. South Africa has identified science and technology as the cornerstone of development within BRICS member states. This emerged at the 12th BRICS ministerial meeting on science, technology and innovation late last week. Let's expand on the conversation. We speak to Annaline Morgan, who is Chief Director for Overseas Bilateral Cooperation at the Department of Science, Technology and Innovation. Annaline, a very good evening to you. Thank you so much for your time. South Africa got to share its broader national objectives of ensuring that science and technology play a critical role in shaping a sustainable future within the BRICS framework. Perhaps talk to us about some of those goals and the focal areas that were under the spotlight. Uh, good evening and good evening to all the listeners and the viewers. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, so we, as you rightfully put it, we had the meeting actually which concluded last Friday. It was started, we started off with a senior officials meeting and then followed by the ministerial meeting last Friday attended by our Deputy Minister for Science and Technology, Ms. Malungele Dina, Her Excellency. So the key issues from the meeting uh, were where we discussed and adopted the declaration was that BRICS member states agreed to collaborate on issues of research infrastructure. So to ensure that uh, key research infrastructure investments are made within the BRICS countries uh, to facilitate scientific excellence and research and development. One of the was the was the report mm -hmm. on the joint funding. So within the BRICS block, we have a program called the Framework Program where joint projects are funded amongst the BRICS member states on a competitive basis. So since 2015 to 2024, over 150 projects, joint collaborative projects, have been supported amongst the BRICS member states yeah. uh, through the various funding agencies. So I think those are key milestones that were achieved uh, and reported during the meeting. Mm. A few weeks ago, we saw heavy snowfall in the KwaZulu Natal area and other areas uh, showcasing severe weather changes, which some experts in the space say this has shown that the general trend was of an increasing and intensifying uh, weather extreme and that the recently enacted Climate Change Act is a step in the right direction. What was South Africa's stance in the BRICS meeting around the country's focus on using science and technology to tackle these pressing challenges like, like climate change? No, actually, thank you very much for that question. Actually, it's one of the areas that was highlighted in the declaration uh, that was adopted by the ministers uh, that we need to uh, collaborate on issues of, of climate change, but also ensure that there's continuous uh, data collection uh, and, and these areas. So one of, so, so the science and technology sector has what we call 13 working groups of science and technology. So various working groups uh, sit in these scientific uh, working groups. And one of them is actual on, on geospatial uh, technologies, which met uh, a week before the ministerial meeting. So where we can sh share information, uh, geospatial information, but also information about earth observation data uh, and also weather forecasting and climate change. Uh, so we've also discussed that we need to do joint exhibitions mm. uh, uh, within the ocean uh, and also uh, collaboration on issues of environmental sciences. So it was highlighted as one of the key areas that we need to collaborate on and that we did acknowledge it that uh, there are the challenges of climate change, especially in countries such as Brazil and South Africa. And as you know, Brazil will be taking over the chairmanship from Russia. Yeah. And Brazil, within that chairmanship, want to highlight issues of climate change. In fact, um, the, the last joint call of projects that are supported was under the theme of climate change. Mm. Uh, and there was a particular focus on the issues of climate change in the call that we launched in late 2023 and the projects now will kick start this year 2024 that will be funded yeah uh, so how would you say this cooperation helps address some of the common problems and challenges faced by the BRICS countries like for instance uh, it's not only unique to South Africa, the global shortage of workers within the science, engineering, technology and mathematics skills, which also raises quite important questions about the need for such skills and how you acquire them and the information within BRICS. Yeah, I think the BRICS uh, cooperation is very important 
uh, because we're able to share uh, uh, expertise, experiences, uh, but also, as I said, the, the, the highlight of the science and technology cooperation, it's the model which we've adopted of joint funding mm -hmm. uh, of projects. And I think it's a success model uh, that we've highlighted that we BRICS countries put money together to actually fund research and not just uh, have the cooperation be about talking and workshops and, 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 and not having tangibles, but we actually fund actual projects uh, in, the, in, the, in the science and technology sector. The other area is that we've got uh, collaboration around how we can, uh, now we've said we want to support joint fellowships and join scholarships, that's the future that we're looking at, mm -hmm. uh, to say how do we uh, put funding within the framework program uh, to support scholarships and, and fellowships um, amongst the BRICS member states. Uh, you'll recall that um, uh, late last year in December, our president, His Excellency President Ramaphosa, uh, announced the South African PhD program initiative. And that's a program that we are currently finalizing as a department. And one of the, the, the areas of the program will be how do we send South Africans uh, to other countries to study their PhDs uh, uh, in joint programs. And I think the BRICS collaboration provides for this opportunity. But another opportunity is the sharing of um, uh, infrastructure, research infrastructure, uh, because some countries don't have particular research infrastructure. So we're able to share this re uh, research infrastructure where our scientists can travel to another country to use particular scientific equipment that might not be existent in South Africa. Mm -hmm. So they can travel either to Russia, Brazil, China, etc., uh, to use various scientific equipment. I think it's a very a valuable cooperation uh, to facilitate uh, yeah. Scientific Before we lose you, um, just pardon the interruption, just last week we saw Minister Bladen Zamande unveiling the country's astro-tourism strategy in the Northern Cape with the whole plan aimed at placing the Northern Cape as the hub of astro-tourism in South Africa. How does such a project, for example, assist or perhaps even aid in the BRICS countries' intentions to create this unified scientometric database? Uh, yes, in fact, uh, I'm happy you mentioned Cytrometric Database because in the declaration that we adopted uh, last Friday in Moscow, uh, one of the key new areas that Russia has adopted under their chairmanship Centrometric databases, uh, and you see that the, the declaration you find it online, which are signed by the various countries, uh, is that how do we sh uh, share data around centrometric data, but also establish databases within the uh, within the BRICS countries. So we are very happy that this now has been adopted within that declaration. But one of the other uh, working groups that we we have, as I said, there are 13 working groups under the science sector, and one of the working groups is on astronomy. Uh, so the, the astronomy working group actually met a week before the ministerial meeting uh, and they are discussing establishment of a, uh, uh, amongst the BRICS countries and how they do joint research and sharing of data within mm. the astronomy working group. How best do you think South Africa can benefit from this um, relationship, the collaboration, as you look at some of the loopholes in the country that we're facing and access to other resources which can help boost uh, the, the science and technology space here in South Africa? Yes, definitely, definitely. I think it's a mutual beneficial uh, cooperation uh, because uh, countries uh, collaborate on mutual interests but also mutual benefit uh, and I think what, what, what is good is that we bring our joint resources mm. together and we leverage from each other uh, the different uh, opportunities obviously guided by our various national policies uh, because as South Africa we've got the uh, science and technology decadal plan uh, so we are guided by the priorities of the science and technology decadal plan and then also how do we also uh, support uh, directly and indirectly uh, the implementation of the national development very well. Thank you so much for speaking to us this evening. Annaline Morgan, who's Chief Director for Overseas Bilateral Cooperation at the Department of Science, Technology and Innovation.